Hi, I'm Catherine Diorio and welcome to Check Please, the show where regular people from all over Chicago recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot and the other two go check them out and tell us what they think. This week, concierge Lori Kapolinski says that her pick is the perfect throwback to a time when amazing customer service combined with outstanding food and atmosphere. But advertising account planner Corey Richardson says that if you want a modern, awesome twist on a taco, schedule a stop at his selection. Up first, market research manager Ellen Yoon has searched far and wide for great Korean food, and she found it in Chinatown. She says that for creative kimchi and more, follow her to Surmac and stop in at Ajuma's Apron. You walk into Ajuma's Apron, you're greeted by these young, handsome, beautiful people in here just saying, 안녕하세요. That's like saying hello. They can expect authentic Korean food. Korean food is marinating, fermenting, and a lot of that. And there's a lot of history to that as well. It's a little buffet style. That's why there's like so many side dishes as well, too. Everybody has to share. It tastes so much better that way. <laughs> I got into this business because I love cooking Korean food. I remember my mom cooking this for me and it just brought back everything, like all the memories, good memories and things like that. Ajuma means it's an endearment for auntie. Ajima has awesome, awesome bright colors on, like pink and red that you can think of, and they got the visors on and they got the curly hair going on. It's short. <laughs> you, I can spot them like miles away. But they love it because it reminds them of their home cooking, like their mom's cooking, aunt's cooking, Ajima's cooking. Ellen, you say Ajuma's apron is awesome. Tell us why you chose it. Well, I chose Ajuma's apron because for me, it is my go-to place for Korean food in Chicago. I spent a couple years living abroad in Korea. Okay. So, finding a great spot in Chinatown close to where I live was fantastic. Love the food, mm -hmm. super authentic. Um, and so I speak from experience in the sense that coming here, you know, you're gonna find a lot of places that want to give you something that appeals to the American palate. And that's what I think Ajima's Apron just goes all the way, brings those traditional flavors right across to the US, um, and is just such a yummy, fun, vibrant spot. Can you tell us what Ajima <laughs> means? <laughs> Absolutely. So Ajima normally refers to a woman but more so a housewife, stay-at-home mom type of a thing. They're busy, they're working hard, they're taking care of a house and kids and all of that, and they're running around, and so then they start to stop taking care of themselves a little bit. And the next thing you know, you get this short haircut with this tight perm <laughs> and these funky clothes, and but Ajumas are really seen as a source of strength right. within a Korean home. And Mickey Lee, who's the owner, the reason she chose that name is because it's kind of an ajuma is someone who would be forcing food on you to eat, you know, in a Korean that. family. So, Lori, what did you think when you went there? Well, we started out having a really, really wonderful day. We decided to take the Chicago water taxi. Uh, very easy to find uh, the restaurant. It's next to the Chicago fire station. We were super excited. Uh, we walked in. It's um, very modern, very clean, wood benches. They had some cool uh, hip Korean music playing. <laughs> and we're like, OK, let's go. So we uh, told the waiter that we'd never had Korean food before and to please help us. How? How should we do this? He said, well, you could really order whatever you want. Okay, well, <laughs> let's start with the appetizers. So we ordered the seafood uh, pancake. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, that was delicious. Okay. Well, we didn't realize that you better eat fast and out comes our entree. And we're not even halfway finished. Mm -hmm. And it's so good, we're not gonna put it down. Mm -hmm. So our entree dish um, sat there in a stone pot with a egg on top that you're supposed to mix in. Um, that got cold. The rice was rock hard in the bottom by the time we finally and got to that. You know what? That's good. 
You oh, we want didn't like that. it. Oh, we didn't like <laughs> it. Right. Actually, that's a part of the dish. You want your rice to get nice and crispy and crunchy on the bottom, and then you really get in there and you have to shovel okay. it off. Okay. Well, <laughs> we didn't care for that. Gotcha. Okay. So we ordered the dumpling. So I'm going for the chopsticks, and I've never had stainless steel chopsticks before. And I'm like, you know what? I can't use this. They were like two knitting needles. The stainless steel chopsticks also threw me for a loop. <laughs> useless. <laughs> Completely useless. <laughs> then all these side dishes came, and we're like, what's with this? So that wasn't such a good experience. Mm -hmm. um, Pro tip about that with the dumplings, you want to just shove it all right in there. Okay. Yeah. And then also yes. the dishes all come out at once, which is not like Western culture where we're used to having coarse dishes. Yeah. Things just kind of come out of the kitchen, the Korean kitchen, and you just kind of eat it as it comes. There's a communal sense mm -hmm. of dining. And so one really fun thing is the panjang that comes to the table, say some... The panjang are little side dishes. The panjang so. are little side dishes, yes. You know, a lot of times you can use the panjang to kind of temper the heat a little bit. Whereas your main dish would be nice and spicy, the panjang will be a little bit more neutral and kind of um, help to cool you down. So we took about 13 people with us. Um, when it was, that made it a lot easier because I am not necessarily a huge fan of Korean food. The fact that it's BYOB and that we had mm -hmm. this large group and yet the food just kept coming out, mm -hmm. that's what made it fun. So, you know, once the uh, beef bulgogi had come out and mm -hmm. we were starting to eat that and enjoy that, well, here comes the chicken bulgogi. Mm -hmm. We had, the, we had the, the, the seafood pancake. We also had the kimchi pancake, mm -hmm. which for me was good because I'm not really a big fan of kimchi. That's my sure. that's my issue with Korean Acquired food. Acquired taste. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. That was delicious. But okay. the kimchi pancake was was really good. It wasn't bitter or anything like that. I think the thing that I liked the most was the salted mackerel. It's 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 weird. I like sardines. You know, it takes me back when I eat sardines and crackers, and the salted mackerel is like a giant sardine. Mm -hmm. What I liked about it was, again, as a person who's not really into Korean food, you look at the walls. There's, you know, different listings of the dishes and what's in them and what to expect from each of them. And okay. so it's like, okay, we know, we get that, not that. Mm -hmm. We'll get this and not this. So, Laura, you're a concierge, and you're used to reviewing menus and prices. What did you think of the price points here? I could not believe how reasonable it was. Our table was completely filled with food, mm -hmm. and it was $31, which... Mm -hmm is really unbelievable. So the thing about Ajima's apron that I really like is it's the hole in the wall authenticity and prices, but a nice, modern, clean feel. I love all that about it. So Ellen, you chose Ajima's apron. Sum it up for us. Ajima's apron is a very fun, fresh, and delicious cuisine. Mm -hmm. Lori, I would um, suggest trying a lot of things, and it's your opportunity to try Korean food at a very reasonable price. And Corey? It's really good if you're a beginner or if you're not really a fan. Um, it's got options that aren't necessarily going to be as assertive or, um, you know, as off-putting as you might think. You can try the seafood pancake and more at Ajuma's Apron, 218 West Cermak Road, 312-326-2800. Open for lunch and dinner every day, reservations are not accepted, alcohol is BYOB, and the average tab per person is $25. Kapolinski lives the fast-paced life of many Chicagoans, but every now and then she wants to just slow down and take in an old-school vibe. And that's when she slips down to State Street and stops in at the Tortoise Club. My wife and I wanted to create a very gracious experience. It really is about the experience here, coming into your own personal club, but it's open to everyone. I'm a Chicagoan born and raised. I've lived here all my life, and we celebrate Chicago in a very large way here. I love this city, and I really, with my wife, have wanted to create a very special Chicago place. The items that are on our menu are nothing that you haven't heard of before. 
classic American cuisine, but the chef is maybe just adding a little bit of twist to it to modernize it. I love being a restaurateur. I like being in the restaurant greeting guests. Hi guys, how are you all? Good, how are you? And I want them to think that they were in this very warm, welcoming environment where they had a great meal and they also had a memorable experience. And the experience goes far beyond the food and the service. Lori, you say Tortoise Club is one of a kind. Tell us why you chose it. I absolutely love the Tortoise Club. It's a very classy and sophisticated restaurant located downtown with a wonderful American cuisine menu. Can you tell us kind of what American classics you're going to see on the menu? What are some of those great menus? Some items? of the things that they're known for, one thing is a wonderful pheasant pie. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, a pot pie. It's filled with root vegetables. It has a wonderful homemade uh, pastry. It has a faux gras gravy on the top. Um, they also have very good uh, fish dishes. Um, they have, at lunchtime, lobster rolls mm -hmm. that are absolutely out of this world. They have cheeseburgers. Um, just saw the American classic. We went online beforehand and looked at the prices, and mm -hmm. the prices are definitely for grown folks. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. So we decided that we would go with another couple and we'd make it a date night. That's nice. Um, you know, so we went on a Thursday evening. We went and to the point about you know, the old school vibe. They had live jazz being played, oh. and the food was good. Um, we had the shrimp, fried shrimp appetizer and the beef tartare. Mm -hmm. The beef tartare was actually really, really good. Oh, I wanted to try that. One of our guests had, did have the pheasant pie, and we all sampled that, and that was really good. I had the, the Colorado lamb chop, um, and it was okay, and my wife had the Roquefort, uh, the steak Roquefort, and again, that was okay. I think because I, I, you know, I like to go to white tablecloth type chop houses, you know, I wanted it to be a little bit more elevated. Because again, looking at the prices, it was like, okay, what's the big finale? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, Lori, tell us about, I mean, the atmosphere. Do you feel like that gives more to the restaurant? I think, you know, there's like a huge difference between going out to eat and going out to dine. And the Tortoise mm -hmm. Club is definitely a place where you're going to go out to dine. This is a dining mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. Reservation, get dressed up, mm -hmm. maybe get your hair done, put your pearls on, mm -hmm. and go. I think you're also um, paying for the jazz music. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's the whole thing. It's the whole attention to details. Oh, no, I, I, I get it. From my perspective, it's, you know, it's date night and I'm taking my wife mm -hmm. out. We're paying for dinner. You're dressed up. We're dressed up. Right. We're paying a babysitter, all of that, you know, so I, I got it. It's just, I didn't, I wasn't feeling it. Um, mm. It just wasn't my thing. So before going in, I checked out the menu online and I was a bit intimidated, Okay. right? I'm seeing uh, nice adult prices or, <laughs> you know, relatively expensive prices. Okay. But um, just before going to the restaurant, I made a really quick reservation. And by the time my husband and I walked through the front doors, they greeted us by name. Right. The host was very friendly and chatted with us. And, you know, I mentioned to her I was celebrating a little promotion at work. Mm -hmm. The end of our meal was capped with two glasses of champagne on the house to help us celebrate. I mean, how phenomenal is that? So right off the bat, great service. And like I said, I really enjoy ethnic cuisine. So classic American fare may not be, you know, my first meal option or my first go-to. So I was so impressed. I had the scallops and it was phenomenal. So good. My husband had the um, spare beef ribs. I believe it is, and it was, I just, I wanted his, I wanted mine, I wanted to eat everything, you right. know, so fantastic. We also had the calamari and the Caesar salad as appetizers. I consider myself to be right. a fair tipper, kind of 15 to 20%, mm -hmm. you know, based on the service I'm receiving, that was a 25% tipping sort of a place. They were phenomenal. The service was amazing, mm -hmm. All right, just, just put it, the service is the best, um, but it was, I felt like I was not getting anything different than I would get okay. at a Smith and Walensky or at the Palm or even, you know, at uh, Mastro's. Or a, hmm. I just didn't feel like I was getting a, a different type of experience. Um, okay. You know, again, I got the old school vibe. I understood all of that. It's just when you're paying that kind of money, you're like, all right. You, you know, want something a little more. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, Keen and Megan Addington, they're the owners of the restaurant, and, and Keen has been in the restaurant industry for pretty much his entire adult life. And he had started as Let Us Entertain You, kind of worked his way through there, and then started, actually was the creator of Flat Top Grill. And then they sold it off, and they did a little road trip with the kids, and then came back and couldn't get away from the restaurant business. Sure. And Tortoise Club is, is what they came back and created. What were you looking at? Tell us about the atmosphere, like the decor there. So the decor was fun. I thought, hey, you know what? Don Draper would take a client here. <laughs> and if this place is good enough for Don Draper, you know I'm going there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. like all of the waitresses. All of the waitresses. Yeah. Oh, I her. love all the and waitresses. And black dresses. Oh, yeah. They spent a lot of time creating the atmosphere mm -hmm. and the decor. And they actually partnered with the Chicago Historical Society. So all of those caricatures, those are actually prominent Chicago uh, residents, but not the ones we all think of, like Al Capone, like you hear all these things. They really partnered to try to get more obscure Chicago um, figures. Laura, you chose Tortoise Club. Sum it up for us. Classic American cuisine in the old Chicago style. Great. Corey? Go on payday. <laughs> <laughs> and Ellen. I would say the Tortoise Club is a special occasion sort of a place um, and knowing this history about Chicago I think I would try it again and um, go into it with a new sense of appreciation. You can try the short ribs and more at Tortoise Club. 350 North State Street. 312-755-1700. Open for lunch Monday through Friday and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted and the average tab per person without drinks is $45. and appreciates creative cuisine, so it's no surprise that his selection might make you rethink an old standby. He says for flavors that never go out of style, you've got to make your way to Milwaukee Avenue and stop in at Antique Taco. I went to Kendall College. I have a fine dining background where I studied in France, and I knew that um, we just want to do something a little bit more casual environment that people can eat every day. When we were kind of conceptualizing a restaurant, you know, I kind of asked Rick, what, at the end of the day, do you love to cook? And, you know, it's always, if, if he doesn't even have to think about it, it's Mexican food. It was just truly kind of um, a blending of two things that we loved, Mexican food and antiques, and we thought, why not? You know, sometimes people are like, this doesn't feel like a Mexican place, but it feels like the place that we wanted to create. I think that we, we relate to a lot of people uh, if you know we have an, an older couple that walks in and they see things that they might have used when they were younger to you know the new demographic that's around Wicker Park. You know what's great about this place is it's such a mix. We have families that come in, we have locals, we have people that come in from the suburbs. When you walk down the streets you might find a hipster or two and, and you might find them in here. So. <laughs> Corey, you say the food at Antique Taco is timeless. Tell us why you chose it. Um, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a taco fan, okay. and uh, I lived in Austin, Texas for a couple of years, and one of the things I really learned to enjoy in Austin... Great tacos there. Oh, yeah, one of the, <laughs> was, was the, the taco culture, mm. um, and, you know, the authenticity of it, the fresh ingredients, and really just, you know, it, there's nothing that beats going outside on, like, a warm day mm -hmm. with a taco and a Mexican Coke, the one, the one that's got the real <laughs> sugar in it, and, and just kind of taking it all in. And, um, you know, I think that antique taco really gives that. Um, mm -hmm. I call it hipster tacos because, <laughs> you know, it's located in Wicker Park. One of the cool things about it is it takes tacos from being at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, we just left the party type thing. <laughs> and it elevates it into something that's fun mm -hmm. and it's someplace you can take the family. Well, it's great. You know, Ashley and, and Rick Ortiz are, are the owners of the restaurant. And they both worked in the food industry. He went to Kendall College, which is actually where I went to culinary school. And she worked in the operations side of, you know, catering and mm -hmm. event planning. And they both kind of decided to take a break from their jobs and they did a road trip. And so they came back and 
antique taco is kind of this culmination of their travels. A more serious taco place as far as it's not just this hole in the wall, slap some you know meat on a tortilla, but they, they don't take themselves seriously. They no. just, it's fun still and it's, kind of in line with the neighborhood. Imagine what a taco would be if, it were, if a taco moved to Wicker Park. <laughs> and this is what, that's what you get, is it Wicker Park? It would wear these glasses. It would wear those glasses. <laughs> You know, and, and hang out next to a record store, which, sure. <laughs> which is where sure. Antique Taco right. is. Kind of cry in the corner. <laughs> well, Ellen, what did you think when you went there? Um, so again, looking at the menu online, you know, you kind of have your preconceived notion that's probably going to be really hip and everything, and, and that's fine, but I tend to stay on the south side. Mm -hmm. um, and so my order was guacamole and chips, the chili cheese curds, hello. <laughs> um, fish tacos, we had steak tacos, and a rosemary margarita. Mm -hmm. The fish tacos were phenomenal, uh -huh. right? So really uh -huh. yummy, fresh. Reminds me of something I can get in California. Mm -hmm. Love the like pickled cabbage that was on top, really good. Mm -hmm. I have to say, the margarita, I've had better. This is the rosemary margarita? Yes. Okay. So when I hear rosemary margarita, I'm thinking, you know, this is gonna be something different. And it, it was more of a classic margarita for me, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Classic margarita, never hurt anybody, right? Yeah, yeah, especially absolutely. a quart of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so Lori, tell us about when you went there. You had well, to wait a little while. Well, we uh, took a taxi from downtown, and it was less than a 10-minute taxi ride, and we pulled up, and there was a line out the door. This was Friday night at 7, after we worked all week. But we're coming for the show, and so in we went. And I'm so glad that we did. The owner, she came over also with a menu. <laughs> so as we're standing in line, you know, we're looking at that. Wonderful, gave us time to look at all the wonderful antiques. Um, loved the music that was playing. It was all 60s and 70s, which is our music. And we ordered the <laughs> mushroom tacos. Uh, the shrimp tacos were excellent. Uh, the griddle marks were still on the shrimp. Um, we had the guacamole and chips, and I loved that they put it in the little blueberry container, mm -hmm. which really brought the farm to table idea because you could tell that everything, and as you're watching in the kitchen, how fresh everything was. Yeah. Did anyone have the corn off the cob salad? Sure, Dana. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, that was so good. Lori, did you try the chili cheese curds? No, I did not. <laughs> we ordered half the menu, mm -hmm. and next time, which is going to be very, very soon, we're going to order the other half. Oh, so yeah. thank so, you for that. This is a really fresh take on Mexican. Yes, right. you're getting fresh ingredients when the uh, the sweet and spicy chicken taco I mean you can taste the cumin in that you can mm. taste like it's got a Middle Eastern Mediterranean type feel to it we went in a group once and to the point about the music they were playing Bohemian Rhapsody on the patio yeah and it turned into a sing-along and it was us and strangers and it was the cops were looking like what's going on it was very it was, very fun it's 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 a fun place to really eat. fun and it was a mixed crowd there were children there when we got there right. and then by the time we left at nine o'clock we were the antiques and we decided, you know what, it's time for us to go home. So we <laughs> left because everyone was like 20-ish. Well, Corey, tell us about the neighborhood over there. I mean, it's changed a bit yeah, in the last few years. So It's Wicker Park, um, and it's evolved. You know, now you know, it's, it's hipster parents. It's it's not just the hipsters themselves. Not the hipsters themselves. It's babies with ironic. Yeah, it's babies with ironic. <laughs> you know, Wicker Park is actually a cool place to take your kid to play. I take my daughter there all the time. Wow, it's, it's, okay. But it, the neighborhood, it's evolved from, you know, what were once like dive bars and hole in the wall type places. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten, you know, it's gotten a lot better. I mean, there's a Harold's chicken there, but even the sure Harold's is. is it's a hipster Harold's. <laughs> yeah, right across the street. So, but I like, I like Wicker Park because I get the sense of diversity and I get the sense of fun. We usually tend to stay away from the north side, uh, but it was such a great date night and we had so much fun. <coughs> Corey, you recommended Antique Taco. Sum it up for us. Hipster taco in a hipster neighborhood. <laughs> great. Lori? Don't be put off by the line. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a reason why there's a line and get in the line and place your order. Ellen? Fresh, fun, could make for a really great girls' night out or a group of friends getting together and then enjoying the neighborhood afterwards. You can taste the margaritas, tacos, and more at Antique Taco, 1360 North Milwaukee Avenue, 773-687-8697. Open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is $15. So on this week's show, we featured Ajuma's Apron on Cermak, Tortoise Club on State Street, and Antique Taco on Milwaukee Avenue. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we traveled to Chinatown and checked out Ajuma's Apron. Ellen recommends it for authentic and amazing Korean cuisine. Lori thought the food was hit and miss, but that it was a good value. Corey was pleasantly surprised and thought it was a great place to bring a group. 
Then, we took you to Tortoise Club in River North. Lori recommends it for its classy atmosphere and exceptional classic American cuisine. Ellen was blown away by the service and loved the food. Corey enjoyed his meal, but thought it was too pricey. Lastly, we went to Wicker Park and stopped in at Antique Taco. Corey recommends it for fresh, tasty tacos with a great vibe. Lori was surprised by the fantastic service and loved the menu. Ellen had a great time and appreciated the fun, fresh food. We've had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank my guests, Ellen Yoon, Lori Kapolinski, and Corey Richardson. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check, Please. I'm Catherine Diorio, and I'll see you then. Cheers. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check, Please, go to wttw.com slash check, please.